Welcome to Around the Weird. Here's your host, the museum curator of the strange and unusual, Mr. Nothing. Thank you, Mysterious Voice, and welcome back to Around the Weird, a booktube channel where I talk about all the unusual and out-of-the-ordinary literature that I have found in my travels. Today, I want to talk about a short story that I read because it is Short Story Tuesday, uh, and today's short story is all about young love. I am referring to First Love by Judith Ortiz Kofer, which was published in 1990. For those who don't know, Judith Ortiz Kofer uh, was a Puerto Rican uh, author uh, known for writing, um, you know, uh, poetry, short stories, and uh, prose and even novels um, and, and children's stories as well. She's a um, um, pretty prolific kind of kind of author and very well regarded uh, for her work. Uh, she um, she was inducted into uh, uh, like a Georgia Writers Hall of Fame as well as uh, ha- she won a, a number of awards for her work. Uh, so you know, very well regarded. Uh, and a lot of her work focused on uh, her experience as a Puerto Rican woman um, and focusing on love and family and, and things of those nature. Uh, pretty interesting author. This is the first time that I have encountered her, uh, but I would be very interested in checking out more of her work in the future. Uh, so without further ado, let's talk about First Love. I will do a summary, a little bit of analysis, and we will move on from there. So First Love focuses on an unnamed narrator. I think it might even just be Judith talking about her her past. Uh, but she is an unnamed uh, 14-year-old Puerto Rican girl uh, who uh, moves from Puerto Rico to uh, New York City. Um, and uh, she's, this is all told from like the future when a, when a woman is remembering how she was in her, in her youth. Um, she, yeah, she's a 14 year old girl and she's talking about what it's, what it was like to fall in love for the first time and to really um, sort of be uh, dealing with, with those kinds of emotions uh, for the first time. Uh, but she notes that her first love was an Italian uh, senior in high school when she was a a freshman. Uh, not really sure if um, her mom would let her or her parents would let her, you know, date someone who was so old or that much older than her, um, and um, you know, not really noticing, no knowing if he's noticing her uh, because she doesn't really talk to him or anything like that. She just notes that she uh, tries to. Uh, find ways to, to see him. He, he works as a as a stock boy at a, at a local supermarket, and she goes and uh, spies on him. Uh, and, but he seems to notice her, like uh, checking her out uh, from time to time, noticing that she's kind of enamored by him, but not really saying anything specifically to her, since they don't re- really run into, in in the same social circles. The narrator feels of a, uh, a sense of deep longing that she can't an can't act upon because again like they, they they never really talk to one another uh but fortunately uh there is a roman banquet put on at school uh the narrator is given kind of like a side part uh and while she while, while the the banquet is happening when all the parents are there uh the the italian boy uh looks at her from across the stage they ca- they see each other and she feels a bit of bit of hope within her and then um after the play is over she gets dressed and changed and gets uh, her dad is waiting for her outside and the italian boy comes up to her and gives her a kiss and then proceeds to to leave before anyone catches them kissing in this uh what, what i should have said is a religious sort of catholic school um but she goes home uh and uh she finds that uh at school in the future, uh, she, she's being ignored by uh, the boy, and she realizes that it wasn't really like um, a romantic kind of endeavor. He, the The boy just noticed that she was attracted to him, and and uh, his ego was inflated, so he wanted to give her uh, a kiss as as a result, just to prove that he that he could. And um, the narrator can't really act upon any further emotions that they have because their her parents, her mom, is moving to Puerto Rico, uh, and her, um, she won't be able to be around this boy anymore. And uh, she's really sad, but she's come to realize several lessons in, in the matter. Specifically, uh, you know how some people only want 
like that kiss from you they they it's not really love it's it's more of an ego thing and then um also she she learned how to make herself more visible and to speak out when when she was attracted to someone uh so it's it seems like there was a positive experience and she ends up on like a or the the story ends on an on a quote by Camus uh just noting that uh if love were easy um life wouldn't be uh as simple or something like that or if life were some or it basically you know life love is this way because life isn't meant to be easy or whatnot and that's where the story ends there in terms of analysis there's really only one theme touched upon in this story called first love and that is of course first love or young love um that Kofer is talking about here uh, the, as she notes, the narrator, narrator is influenced by hormones and falls for this mysterious and beautiful Italian boy who has come into her life once her parents move to New York. Uh, even though, like, they, she calls it love, like, it doesn't really seem like love. It's more like, you know, the usual hormonal lusting after another boy. But to her, it seems like love, which is, which is important. Uh, it doesn't matter that she b barely knows anything about this Italian boy. We don't even find out his name in this story. Um, it doesn't matter that her parents probably wouldn't approve, given them the age difference. Uh, and it also doesn't seem to matter that this is that like it probably wouldn't be allowed in this um, religious Catholic school that she's going to. Uh, the nuns wouldn't approve of any like affection between the two, uh, because you have to save yourself for God and whatnot. Uh, but uh, the narrator has decided to, you know, indulge in these these feelings that she is having. Uh, she goes to the grocery store on a frequent basis, um, drinking as much milk as possible so that they'll run out and hoping that her mother uh, smokes her cigarettes really fast uh, and, and in general just trying to get to the grocery store as many times as possible uh, so that she can see this boy whenever she gets a chance. Um, and she stares at him whenever she sees him because she thinks she's invisible because the boy doesn't really notice her. But he does notice her from time to time. It inflates his ego and um, it uh, it makes him feel important. And so he can like indulge a little bit in, in giving back some of those feelings to uh, the narrator, even though it's not really love for him. It's more of just that, that flattery that he wants to indulge in. The feeling of knowing that you could... Um, do whatever you want to this girl and all, all you stand to do right now is just kiss her which will leave a, a significant um, influence on this on this on, on the narrator uh, and also you know the narrator cries a lot because she wants this boy to notice her but he's he's not really really doing that uh, but after she gets kissed she learns that awful truth that I that I've just noted that that it's not really love um, that the boy wasn't really that interested in her he, he just noticed that she was flattering him through her her ad adulation and he decided to indulge in that a little bit uh, and she notes uh, specifically there's a quote where where she talks about how um, she learned a lesson from this that uh, sometimes uh, in love it's it's best to keep your your opponent or your lover guessing, uh, which is a very cynical message to have. And indeed, in the very final paragraph, the next the next line, uh, the the narrator notes that yeah, that is indeed a bit cynical. I've since grown better at expressing myself and making myself visible in love, and that and that comes with experience. But it is important to note that you know your young love, like your first love can really influence your future relationships and make you maybe more cynical or make you uh, more cautious and, and less willing to to go out on a limb because someone could hurt you the way that uh, the, the narrator was somewhat hurt in this uh, in this story here. So young love influences later love, which isn't that big of a or like that sort of novel of a message. This has been said by many people going back to, to Shakespeare. Uh, but it's 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 still interesting. It's 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 uh, the way that she talks about it, um, and especially noting that it, you know there's no need to be cynical about it because even though you'll sometimes get your heart broken, love is so great, and you can always improve on how you seek out love, 
and improve upon you know, your past mistakes like that happened in your in your teen years and your your early 20s to to find yourself in better relationships in, in the future so young love it, it doesn't always last and you know we're, we always make silly goofy mistakes within it but we can always improve ourselves uh, going into future relationships. Anyway, those are my thoughts on First Love by Judith Kofer. Not a whole lot to this short story, but it is a, a pretty interesting short story. Uh, I enjoyed it, but I, um, as I noted, like there, there isn't anything particularly new being said here, but it is well written, and um, like Judith Kofer does add a little bit of humor that makes the story uh, pretty memorable there. So I, I think I do recommend this. I'll put a link to it in the description. Let me know what your thoughts are in the comments below. Um, otherwise, let me know um, if you have anything to say about my review in the comments below as well. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe so that more people can find out about this short story or this author if they don't already know. And join the Discord as well if you want to continue having conversations about books or movies or video games or whatnot. And until then, I wish you the best of luck in your weird and um, hormone-driven travels. Farewell.